Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Now, back in August, we held our first virtual aesthetic marketing seminar, and it was, gosh, it was awesome. It was a learning experience of how to do something virtually that we typically do in person. Our aesthetic marketing seminars are something that we hold for our students and they're invite only for our students. We do just kind of deep dive into the trainings that we are already teaching inside of our programs. And because it's for our students, they already have this kind of foundational education. So when we decided to open it up to everybody because of COVID, because of all of this, you know, going on in the world, not being able to meet in person, I think it brought a ton of value. Um, But it was also just like, holy cow, that's a long time to be on Zoom. (laughs) We had hundreds of estheticians show up, participate. It was awesome. And, you know, when I was talking with Annie, with our director of operations about how we can continue to bring more value on the podcast, we decided that we wanted to just record a couple of those trainings that we think are super, super important for all spa owners to really have a grasp on. So, One of those trainings that I want to go over with you today is called Digital Marketing for Spas. And in my opinion, digital marketing is something that is, it's a non-negotiable. It's something that you need to be doing in your business. If you do not have a digital marketing strategy, then in a couple of years, your business will be obsolete. And I know that that sounds a little bit harsh or a little bit just matter of fact, but I, I truly believe it's the truth. And digital marketing is something that, you know, we're going to break down five core areas of digital marketing, but it's, it's almost like when, you know, back in the, the early 2000s, when everyone was like, oh, you've got to have a website, you know, and it was like this new thing. And there were plenty of businesses that didn't even have websites. Now it's unheard of to not have a website, right? Like what kind of business doesn't have a website? And you're going to see that in really, I think in the next two years, if you don't have a digital marketing strategy, it's, you really will be left in the dust. So this is very, very important information for all spa owners to learn. So I want to go through this and this is an episode. If you're listening, you know, go ahead and listen, but be sure to head to our website and actually watch the video on this because I'm filming my slides here. And some of the things you may want to actually see the slides uh, to fully take in the information. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So digital marketing can be broken down into multiple categories. So today we're gonna be talking about websites, email, social media, search engine optimization or SEO, and also paid traffic. So let's go ahead and begin with websites, which are your website is your central digital hub. It's where we're sending all of your traffic to. So this is where your social media platforms point back to. It's where we focus on SEO content. So organic traffic, organic search traffic and keywords to ensure that your website is listed on the front page of Google. That's why we care. So when people talk about SEO, it's the reason that we care about that. The reason that we put energy into that is so that when your potential clients, if someone is searching facials near me, waxing near me, your spa is going to come up on that front page because the the running joke is like businesses go to the second page of Google to die, right? It's nobody really goes to the second page. You want to look at who comes up on that first page. So what are you actively doing to show up on that first page of Google? So this is an example of a really great website. This is Melissa Allen. She is a one of our Growth Factor students, but she has an incredible, she's done very, very well with her website. And I, I'm pointing out the different areas that I think really make her stand out. So if you look up here on the top announcement bar, 
it says save on future appointments by becoming a brand ambassador today. Learn more. So if you click on that, a, she has a brand ambassador program, which is essentially connecting with micro influencers to promote her spa. So micro influencers are people that have uh, anywhere between 10,000 to 100,000 followers on social media. And really like if you're going super local with this, you can even have someone with two to 3000 followers. It really matters how engaged their audience is, but, and this can be other businesses as well, but having a brand ambassador program, it's going to get the conversation started more about your business um, and having other businesses talk about your products and services. She's got a blog. Blogs are super important because what a blog does is regularly update your content. It includes keywords. So when Google, when you post a new blog, it's going to, in the internet land, it's going to post to these different directories. And that's what Google actually searches. Google searches these directories and it's looking for keywords. So if you write a blog about you know, um, who's a great candidate for waxing. And one of the keywords is waxing. And one of the keywords is Cincinnati. If someone is saying waxing near me and Google knows that they're in Cincinnati and you've got a keyword there and you have a website where you're consistently updating, which is, you know, doing maybe like a weekly blog, um, that is going to really help in Google's algorithm to move you onto the front page. There's a lot of other pieces that go into it, reviews, um, you know, a lot of other pieces. But just to know, that's a really important piece to tell Google that you have an active website that's up to date. She's got the book now button in the upper right hand corner. So I am a big believer in having that book now button in the upper right hand corner. I also advocate for having a phone number there, but depending on the needs of your business, if you're someone who all of your appointments are booked online rather than phone call, then you can just have the book now button. But there are there there is a certain group of people who will always prefer to just have a phone call to get something booked. So Keep that in mind, but the upper right-hand corner is always where we are naturally trained to look for that book now button. So great place for a spa to have that. Uh, uncovering beauty and confidence. So that's kind of a great statement saying what she does as a spa, kind of what her core values are. Cincinnati's best spa professionals. So that's giving, you know, uh, social proof. And then try our online consultation. This is really cool and what makes her, her website super unique. This online consultation is actually a quiz. So the quiz, you click on that. You She's collecting email addresses, right? So that's built anyone who is on her website and wants to try the online consultation, whether they're a client or not. And most of these people are not clients. Um, they are going to she's going to number one, learn about their skin type and number two, collect their email. So when they go through the quiz it, at the end, it will give a recommendation of what service would be best for them. But Melissa can now categorize and say, okay, I know that this person with this email entered this information about their skin. I can start them on this customized funnel that is going to talk about hydrofacial, or I can start them on this customized funnel that's going to talk to them about microneedling, or this customized facial or funnel that's going to talk to them about waxing or whatever. So you're looking at their basic needs, and you'll understand when we get into email why that is so important. But that is a super powerful um, email generator right there. Okay, so websites are also a place where we can encourage our clients or potential clients to share their information, whether that is email or phone, so that you're able to build a deeper connection with them. Now, a client needs to have seven to 11 points of contact with you before making a purchasing decision. And connecting with them via email allows you to build a more meaningful relationship, strengthening the know, like, and trust factor. 
So here's an example of someone asking for a phone number. So this is a pop-up and it's saying exclusive offers on the world's best beauty products delivered straight to your phone via text. And the reason that we're seeing a lot of people transition into text or a lot of businesses is because email, when email first started, you know, 20 years ago, when it started becoming like a, a big deal, the open rates were, you know, 90%, something crazy like that. Now the average open rate for spa is around 10%. So if you have a hundred people on your email list, send out an email, only 10 of them on average will open. Now, this depends on how engaged your audience is, how the relationships that you have with them and so on. But on average, uh, our the spa industry is around 10%. Right now, text is somewhere around like 70 or 80%, something like that of read rates of people that are actually reading the text. There's pros and cons to this, right? So uh, an email, you can build a much deeper connection because you can actually write out a conversation. You can tell stories. Texting is really just like, here's this special offer. You know, you it, it's true you can email or you can text links where you're linking to an article, but still overall, I I just don't think texting is totally there yet, um, but it doesn't mean that it's not a... Uh, a great platform to build up in your business. Okay, so here's an example of asking for email. So this is uh, a coupon that says save $10 on your first views visit, get your coupon. So this is, this is a top of funnel activity. This is a lead magnet. So what's happening is when someone goes to this website, they're going to click get your coupon. It's gonna take them to a landing page. And it'll say, enter your name and email and we'll send you your coupon. That's collecting their email address. And then that client, whomever wrote or entered their email, they are going to be started on an email nurture sequence. So they'll get email one will actually be the delivery of the $10 off coupon. And then the following emails, they'll receive probably four or five additional emails in a seven to 10 day time period talking about the brand story of the spa, talking about, um, you know, giving them links to book, encouraging them, building the relationship with them. So this is a great way to strengthen that know, like, and trust factor and get people to book in an automated process. So how do you systemize your website? And this is, you know, something about us and our business and and what our students know is that we are very into systems and processes. It's something that we do very well. We believe that the fastest way to build a thriving business to give you freedom and flexibility and financial gain is by running a systems-based business. And so in each of these aspects, we're going to talk about how we can actually systemize these processes so that you can have more time. So how do you systemize your website? There's many systems that you can put in place. So you can do quarterly reviews to ensure that content is up to date and on brand. That's very important. You can have processes around uploading regularly updated content like a blog or monthly specials. And you can have processes around new opt-ins or lead magnets. So for example, this is Process Street. This is a software that we use in our own business. And this is something that we're actually including in our Spa Retail Rockstar updates for 2021, which we're super excited about, um, where we are actually taking a lot of our KPI tracker or different tools or things that we have included in the program. And we're putting it actually into Process Street so that our students can just click I want this template and use it in their business. So powerful. So If you're using something like Process Street, and this is an example of how to upload a blog to Squarespace. So we have a video, like a screen flow video, just showing, you know, filming the screen and talking about how you actually, showing how you actually do it. And then we also have the step-by-step listing of how you do it under. So select pages, then go to podcast from the Squarespace menu once logged in. Step two, click the plus button 
the plus sign to create a new post. Number three, add the title of your post. So it's like walking you through all these things. So imagine what this would do if you hire someone for your front desk or you hire a virtual assistant. They automatically have a step-by-step instruction of how to upload the blog post, right? So the more that you can take off of your plate as the business owner, as the visionary in your business, that will allow you to work on the business rather than in the business. So super, super important. It's I want you to really grasp how powerful having systems and processes in your business actually is. Okay, so action item for websites. I want you all to do a website review and ask the following questions. So number one, do you have an easy way for your clients to book appointments online? Number two, do you have a seamless way to collect emails and or phone numbers? Number three, are you regularly adding keyword content via a blog to increase SEO? And I would say for a blog, it's minimum twice a month. I recommend once a week. Um, But if you're just not in a space that that's realistic right now, I want you to try and do twice a month. Uh, And your VIP action item, get your Google Analytics account set up so that you can see where your traffic is coming from and create a plan to double down on your largest traffic source. So if you have a Google Analytics account, you can see that, okay, Instagram is sending 80% of our traffic to our website. So if you are spending all of your time on Facebook, but Instagram's really where you're getting your traffic from, then you wanna say, okay, I'm gonna spend all of my time on Instagram and really step up that platform. That's allowing you to make a data-driven decision. Super, super important. Okay, and bonus tip. So if you are looking for a great website designer, we recommend a company called Reversed Out. It's www.reverse, R-E-V-E-R-S-E-D-O-U-T.com. And they are uh, an ex- excellent company. They can help with Squarespace. They can do custom sites. So really, really great um, if you're looking for someone to help you with your website. All right, so let's talk about email. And this is the communication channel that you completely own and control. So the average ROI for email is 3,800% or $38 for every $1 invested. That is why we still care about email. That's an awesome ROI. The top performers, so 18% of companies achieve an ROI greater than $70 per every $1 invested. The low performers, 20% of companies achieve ROI less than $5 per every $1 invested, so still getting an ROI. And segmented emails generate 36% of total email revenue, and triggered email campaigns generate 306% more click-throughs per email than non-triggered emails, and that is from the Data and Marketing Association. So... Let's talk about segmented emails. These are email campaigns that go out to a segment of your list. So when you have your email service provider, if you're using ConvertKit or MailChimp or something like that, you wanna be adding tags to your clients. So you can add anyone who has had a waxing service, they would have a waxing tag. Anyone who has had their lashes done, they would have a lash tag. So you wanna be able to know like, Maybe you want to do a promotion uh, where you're focusing on anyone who has not, they've been, they're a client, but they've never had their lashes done. So you can send out an email campaign just to those people by saying, I want to send an email to everybody except for the people who have a lash tag, right? So if they have a lash tag, they've already had lashes. And so you can create a promotion like that. That's how you really start to have some ninja moves with your email marketing. Now, the more personalized and customized that you can get, the higher the likelihood that an individual will open, find value, and eventually purchase from you. And triggered emails are typically associated with funnels. So by opting into a lead magnet or... um, 
some sort of opt-in, right? A lead magnet is that $10 off coupon that we saw. That is triggering an email nurture sequence that is going to build rapport with your client or potential client and invites them to be a client or have an additional service with you. Email nurture sequences are typically five to seven emails that are delivered over a seven to 10 day time period. So how do you systemize your email? You can uh, systemize it by looking at the content calendar used for planning topics and frequency of use. Any tech aspect of your email service provider can be temp or can be systemized, and then templated email responses for commonly asked questions. That's something that's super powerful. So here in Process Street, I'm going to show you how you know we use this for uploading an email that we're going to send out to our clients through our email service provider. So we use something called Entreport. Um, I don't believe that anyone. Uh, in the spa industry right now really needs to use Entreport. It's a little more complex. I think ConvertKit does just fine. But um, you wanna have a video of how you log in, how you create an email, and then have the step-by-step -step of how you do that. So again, that's going to make it super easy for anyone on your team or whomever you designate to be responsible for uh, sending out emails. Okay, so action item. Do an email audit and ask yourself the following. Am I collecting emails of my clients? Am I collecting emails of people who I could turn into clients? Do I have a funnel set up on my website? Do I have a nurture sequence in place? If the answer is no to any of these, I want you to create a plan with a timeline to make the answers yes. And this is a lot easier than you think. So funnels, you know, I've done a funnel training for our students that shows how I built an entire funnel in about an hour. And so it really does not have to be hard. It's something that can be done and automated. And once you have that in place, oh my gosh, the power that it brings is unbelievable. Okay, social media, let's move on to this. Attracting your ideal clients for top of funnel activities. So that's one of the thing, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, all right, I build this funnel, but where do I post it? How do I get people into it? Well, the number one way that you get people into your funnel is through paid traffic, right? So typically a Facebook ad is going to send people to your landing page, but you can also be you can have it as a link in bio on your Instagram. You can have it as a call to action on any Facebook Live or Instagram Live that you're doing. Have the have the link um, right under there. There's there's lots of ways that you can get people into your funnel. Social media being one of them. So let's talk about what platforms you are using. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. These are the big five. And I know if you're like me, you can be like, oh my gosh, how on earth could I manage all five of those platforms? Well, the good news is you don't have to. I think that number one, checking your Google Analytics account to see what is already working for you. Number two, having a clear idea of where your ideal clients hang out and really maximizing that one. My advice would be start with Facebook or Instagram. And you can really spend the majority of your time on one of those platforms, build it until it is a well-oiled machine before you move on to the next. The reason that I talk about YouTube and Pinterest is because YouTube, which is owned by Google and Pinterest are search engines, right? That's why they're important. So if someone is typing in waxing in Cincinnati and you have a video talking about post-care wax tips that you put on YouTube and you have keywords of Cincinnati, that can come up in the Google alg algorithm. You know how it has like all, and then it has videos. The more videos that you're posting and using the, the platform for, the better it's going to help with the algorithm. And the reason I threw LinkedIn in there is because LinkedIn is having kind of a moment right now. So they, they've been making a comeback in a big way. 
And it's an awesome platform to create referral relationships or for those of you that are interested in consulting and kind of moving into the education space in the sense where you'll be working with other companies, uh, it's a great place to get your first consulting contract. And right now, like using that as a way to really kind of establish your authority is it, it, it's phenomenal. And it, it, LinkedIn is just getting a ton of organic search right now. So in Post With Purpose, which is our social media membership site where we teach you how to create a month's worth of social content in just a few hours, we show you how to create an editorial calendar. And I want to walk you through that right now. So an editorial calendar is simply what you're going to post and on what day. So if you say, okay, I'm going to post Monday through Friday. On Mondays, I'm going to do a before and after. On Tuesdays, I'm going to do an inspirational quote. On Wednesdays, I'm going to do an educational post. On Thursday, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. And on Friday, I'm going to do a behind the scenes. And you say, okay, my promotion this month is on chemical peels. And I'm going to do buy three, get one free. And so then you would say, okay, so on Monday, there's four Mondays in the month. I'm going to pull four before and after photos. On Tuesday, it's an inspirational quote. So, you know, do something about transformation, pull four transformational quotes. On Wednesday, educational posts. So you could say, all right, there's four Wednesdays in the month. I'm going to talk about salicylic acid. I'm going to talk about uh, glycolic acid. I'm going to talk about how chemical peels actually work. And I'm going to talk about um, pH or something like that, you know, so you can do an educational post. And then on Thursdays where you're doing your Facebook live, I would think about the questions that you get in regards to chemical peels all the time. Am I going to look like Samantha from Sex in the City, right? That's a common question. Um, can I get a chemical peel in the summer? Um, think about questions that you get and do a Facebook live, just answering that. And then on Friday behind the scenes, maybe you do a chemical peel on your, on yourself and you can show, you know, maybe you setting up for a peel or maybe your skin actually peeling, but find four posts that do that. When you know exactly what you're looking for, it makes creating content for the week, super, super easy. So we actually take it a step further, and this is the spreadsheet that you get inside of Post With Purpose, but you can create this in um, Excel, in Google Sheets, whatever you want to use. But we simply have the posting date. We have a section for the Facebook caption, Instagram caption, hashtags. We actually upload, we create our images in Canva and upload them into a Google Photos account and include the link right there in the spreadsheet. Why do we do this extra work? Well, if you think about the fact that you can be testing different promotions and you can be doing promotional debriefs at the end of every month and say, wow, our chemical peel promotion just killed it. And maybe your, maybe your microneedling promotion did not. So you can look and say, all right, well, we did really well with our chemical pill promotion. So there's no reason that we can't do that again next year. So every January, we're going to do our chem pill promotion, and um, we want to keep all of the content that we did on social for that. If you think about the algorithm, right, and with Facebook being less than 1% of people organically seeing your uh, content, uh, Instagram is 5 to 7% on a good day, people are not going to remember the before and after picture that you posted a year ago. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So do yourself a favor, do the work up front and make some minor tweaks. Like maybe you can keep the same caption. Maybe you can like figure out a way that you can do less work over time and you can add in different things to brighten it up or to kind of change it, change it up a little bit. But if you have something that's working, why change it? Okay. So how do you systemize your social? Lots of ways that you can do this. So the process in which you create content, the regularity that you're checking in with various platforms, and the way in which you respond to direct messages. So here in Process Street, we have um, a 
a Facebook group, right? We have several Facebook groups and we have systemized the way that we communicate, right? This is a regular post that we do. Welcome to our new members. You could set this up in a way where you have responses to direct messages, because I know that's something that as a spa owner, that's one of the biggest pain points is people say, oh my gosh, I have all these DMs coming in asking me questions. Why don't they just go to my online booking system? Why are they, why are they DMing me at 11 o'clock at night? Well, that's because you have not set clear boundaries as the spa owner. And, you know, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. There is not like the CEO of Starbucks does not get DMs in the middle of the night. And if he does, he doesn't answer them. So it's really about setting up a system and setting up a process that you know, maybe you have an automated response that says, here's the best way to get a hold of us, or here's, you know, like, so you're not just leaving them out in the dust, but coming up with a very clear process that you can have a VA respond to these, or you can set up a messenger bot that responds to these or whatever. But again, you can have it all in process street or whatever um, process software you are using. So action items, I want you to review your social platforms and choose the one that you're going to focus 80% of your time on. Then I want you to do the following. Create an editorial calendar for content creation. Set a goal of number of followers you'd like to increase by and when. And for the VIP action item, I want you to use your Google Analytics account to measure the amount of traffic increase that your true your chosen platform is driving to your website. So let's say that you choose Instagram, you create your editorial calendar, you say, I want to increase by 300 followers by the end of the month. And you're going to be looking at your Google Analytics account to see, all right, how many people, and what was the increase? Like at the beginning of the month, Instagram was sending me X percent. And at the end of the month, after I did my editorial calendar and number of followers, you know, like increased by X amount, this is how many people Instagram was sending to my website, right? Because that's what we care about. We want the ROI. We want to, we don't just want likes. We want to turn likes into clients. All right, let's move on to SEO. And SEO is organic traffic to your site, search engine optimization. So how are you going to come up on the first page of Google when people are searching for anything related to your business? So we kind of touched on this before, but if you are an esthetician in Chicago and you offer facials, waxing, and lashes, you want to come up on the first page of Google for facials in Chicago, waxing in Chicago, and lashes in Chicago. So having an updated Google My Business profile is step one, right? So you want to make sure that you've claimed your business profile. You want to make sure that you have photos up there. Everything's up to date. You want to have a consistent review strategy so that you are having people, you know, leave reviews on a consistent basis. But using keywords and blogs and YouTube videos is going to really help to solidify yourself on that first page of Google. So let's talk about how you systemize this. A client outreach process to get more reviews, regularly reviewing and tracking Google Analytics, and keeping up to date with your content creation strategy. So let's talk about a review strategy. And here I'm looking at, you know, an email um, template that you could use in Process Street. So if I were using an email template for a review strategy, I would say, all right, each, every quarter, I'm going to take 25% of my list and I'm going to send them a templated email that gives them the links to leave a review for us on Google. And so what I would want you to do is tag those people and say, you know, Q1 2021 review request. And then I want you, when Q2 starts, I want you to go to Q2, you know, tag them as Q2 2021 review request and make sure that that's 25% of your list. And so that is a system that you're not only, you know, have some sort of tickler or something, maybe it's on your Google calendar, maybe it's in your project management software that, you know, these are quarterly tasks that need to be done in your business, but having the email template that 
your team can copy and paste or you yourself can copy and paste, saving yourself time to send out makes life so much easier. Okay. So here's your action items. I want you to commit to improving your website SEO by doing the following. Go to your Google My Business profile, ensure that it's claimed and optimized, add photos, include all of the most current information. Create a review strategy where you're asking 25% of your email list to leave a review for you each quarter. Commit to blogging, ideally on a weekly basis, but twice a month at a bare minimum. Now let's get into paid advertising. Everybody's favorite, I know. (laughs) This is the ultimate traffic driver. So you have Facebook ads, you have Instagram ads, you have Google AdWords, there's LinkedIn ads, there's there now even Hulu. We're going to see a lot of um, opportunity for ads on streaming services. Now it's like cable is almost obsolete at this point. I don't know anybody that has cable really, um, but there's all these streaming services and, and previously they had been, you know, just having like... Toyota and all these like big brands advertising, but the reality is they can learn a lot from Facebook who the majority of their revenue comes from the small business owner, right? From people like you and me spending a thousand or $2,000 on ads, not from the Toyotas of the world that are spending a million dollars on ads. The keys to success with this is testing testing, testing. You want to under, make sure that your messaging, that your images, that your copy, all of that, your headlines, all of those are on point with your brand. Now, I want to give you a success story. And this is from one of our Growth Factor students, Andrea. She was a solo esthetician. She moved into a storefront. Um, she did a build out, whole thing. In November of 2019, she had her grand opening event. There were 150 plus people and 47 new client bookings. These are new people that had never been to her business, 47 new client bookings in one night. So Jackie, who is our Facebook ads coach inside of Growth Factor, and also the woman who's been doing our ads for years, ran her ad campaign for her. And the number one ad, there's two ads. So ad number one was the giveaway, right? So when we, when Andrea was doing her grand opening event, she had a giveaway ad. So this was running to people in her zip code, right? Enter to win. So this is actually a video. Um, and you can't obviously see that here, but it's, it's a simple video where it's just different images coming up. Um, it's not anything like professionally filmed. It was actually created in Canva. So if you look on here, it has 41 likes or loves. It has 68 comments and it has 10 shares. And when we look at the ads manager analytics, it says there were 6,558 post engagements. It reached 11,636 people. There were 31,570 impressions per post engagement cost four cents, four cents. That is insane. So she spent $275.96 and the video was played 28,842 times. Holy crap. Now, key elements to a buzzworthy ad. You want the ad to be eye-catching. You want it to have movement. You want it to be highly engaging. You want it to be a no-brainer and you want it to have social proof. In Canva, which again is a free software, there's this animated social media option where you can create movement. Now, why this is so important is video view ads, as you can see, are, they're super, super cheap. So when you're doing Facebook ads, you can do a conversion ad, you can do a video view ad. And if you're doing a video view ad, it's really just to gain awareness about your brand, right? So they wanted to let people know that there were going to be these giveaways. And The other like super cool thing about video view ads is that you can create an audience of people who watched your video. 
And what that does is make that audience much more warm. So when we're creating these animated social media graphics, even the ones that just, if it has just a little bit of movement, like a line that underlines the text or something, that is considered a video. So you can run that. And anybody who watches that, that is creating a new audience for you that you can retarget with ads. So super, super powerful. So we're looking here, time for a giveaway. That is grabbing the attention. We've got some fun emojis. We've got clear steps. So follow this link, fill out the form and tell us what you'd most like to win. And then below, she's got terms and conditions. Then ad number two is the event ad. So we created an event on her business page. And if you see here, there were 167 people that went there were 475 people that were interested. It's got the all the information, you know, Thursday, November 14th, 5 to 9. Here's our address. $5,000 in giveaways. Super, super cool. So she had 208 event responses. There were 7,356 people that she reached, 20,385 impressions. It was 68 cents per cost per results, she spent $142.12. So the action item, if you have never done an ad before and you're ready to dip your toes into the paid ads world, I would first listen to episode number 84 and episode number 144 of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I've got Tara on one episode and Jackie on the other. We're both talking about ads. And I would say boost a post. I want you to boost a post where the call to action is to send you a DM. This takes a lot more work, um, a lot more time, but it doesn't have the complexity of learning how to do ads manager and all of that kind of stuff. What I want you to do with ads manager is to just kind of explore it, go back there, get comfortable, get comfortable with the look and feel because businesses successful businesses advertise. All successful businesses advertise. That's just the way that it is. Okay. So bonus tip. If you want to learn paid advertising yourself, which I think is critically important, I highly recommend that you join the successful ads club with Tara Zerker. If you are already generating more than a hundred thousand in revenue per year, and you'd like to hire ads management out, I highly recommend Jackie Ellis. She does ads for us and for a lot of our growth factor students. She understands the spa industry, um, but you will pay, right? Like an, a good ads manager is anywhere between 1500 to 2500 per month just for the management. And then you also have to have your ads cost on top of that. So keep that in mind. You really want to have more revenue coming in. And even if you are going to hire an ads manager, I want you to... I really recommend knowing what you're talking about before you hire somebody. You want to understand, at least have a basic to moderate understanding of how ads work and what the strategy is um, so that you can have an intelligent conversation with who your ads manager is. Okay, so that was a ton of information, you guys. Um, what was your biggest takeaway? Let me know over in the Small Marketing Made Easy Facebook group. I want you to just comment there, ask any questions that you have, but this was just a super important training, something that I think is essential for all, all spa owners. Like I said, I don't want anyone to be left in the dust. Um, gave you some very clear action items. So please, please, please share this episode with your friends in the spa industry, a rising tide floats all boats. And if you have any questions, be sure to tag me in the group. All right. I will catch you on the next episode.